guys, it is December the 14th, day 14, and I have woken up today feeling like poo. I'm guessing this is why I felt so tired yesterday. This morning I've woken up with a sore throat, slightly stuffy nose, and I just feel lurgy-ish. So I've got a nice snuggly blanket wrapped around me as I edit. Hopefully as the day goes on and once I've got a little bit of food into myself I'll be feeling better because I've got a few DIYs I want to make. One in particular I will actually show you guys uh, now what I plan to do. This right here is the Trixie Natural Living Locomotive and I had one of these years ago and they're fantastic, they're adorable, they're brilliant. I've not had one in such a long time but they're pretty pricey so I'm hoping I can remake maybe not an identical one but certainly a similar style train. So this is my inspiration for today's DIY. Before that though I want to get at least a little editing done, get my makeup on, have some food and then uh, then we'll give it a go. Finally finished editing at least half of tonight's vlog and I still feel pretty cruddy but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I've got the heat on in the room and I think that's helping somewhat. My bones don't ache as much. They were really, really sore this morning. So I can't decide whether I've slept awkwardly or whether it's to do with whatever's going on with my sickness. Anyway, I'm gonna go do my best now to convince Dan to go out and get us some fish and chips for lunch so I don't have to cook today and then I can make a start on my little DIY. Do you think you could go and make a little trip out and get the fish and chips? Maybe. No. He's so mean. I'm listening to Frankenstein in German. Oh. Okay. Goosey. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nine. So Nine. You're so fluffy. Yeah. You're so fluffy. Yeah. Fluffy! Fluffy! This will be on the internet forever and people will see how awful you are making me cook when I'm not feeling well. You're just gonna look mean and nasty and horrible. This is in no way blackmail. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my lair. You're so mean! <laughs> I don't normally do things like this in videos, but I just received an email from somebody um, basically asking me to look into a cage design they've seen that they find to be very, very questionable. It's not one I've seen before. And I don't make videos like this where, where I sort of call out brand names because you can, you can get into some legal trouble uh, when you when you do things like that, so I'm a little careful about it. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing uh, this brand name right, but apparently it's called Wall Rover. W A W -L, L R O V A. And I'm assuming the person who sent me that email watches my videos. I totally get why this cage concerns you. I can't find many images on it. I can't find much information, but what I have seen on it looks awful. I'm assuming this is designed by people who haven't actually done much research into legitimate hamster gerbil and mouse care and are just going by the outdated stuff that that we used to think was okay the other thing is they seem to have focused entirely on height in their cages i haven't found any of their cages that that seem to focus on floor space at all they all just seem to be very very tall and i'm trying to find information on just how large the floor space is oh i just went on my instagram and uh, Pam's new hamster gumdrop is just there on my fun page. He's so cute. Okay, so Wall Rover does actually have an Instagram page and it again doesn't really show much. Uh, new concept housing for pet gerbils, hamsters and mice. That's the information. Oh, they have a video. Borrowing habitat of which animal? Light and portable. Saves space and makes less mess.
Yeah, they, 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 they've clearly got their priorities in the right place. <laughs> like, we're, we're saving space. Yeah, not everybody has space for massive cages, but if you only have space for something like that, you don't have space for a hamster, a gerbil, a mouse, a chipmunk, whatever other animals they showed in that video. It will cause stress, it will cause boredom, and it will ultimately encourage negative behaviours that you don't want, and it will basically make your animal's life miserable. They need space, they need a lot of toys, they need a lot of stimulation, they need a lot more than many people think they do. Okay, the floor space is 14 centimetres wide by 38.5 centimetres long, which, if we just do the, the math on that uh, for, for square inch floor space, 83 square inches. 83. That can't be right. Is that seriously right? 83 square inches. I have to find out how much this thing costs now. 60 pounds. 60 British pounds, which is about, about 68 euros for that much space. This cage cost me about 50 to 60 euros to build. A bin cage, which would be four times the size, if not more, would cost you 10, 20 euros to make. 60 pounds. This might seem a little insane, but I'm going to take my ruler and I'm actually going to measure out the size of this cage on my floor with masking tape so we can see what we can actually fit in this cage. 38. Point five. Oh my goodness. It, that's actually closer to 39 centimeters. That's the length of the cage. 14. And by the way, these are the outer measurements, which is a hugely important thing to note. There's 14 centimeters. Oh my how? How? How has somebody made this? I thought, yeah, that's fine. That'll, I can keep an eye on that, right? That's, that's no problem. That's it. That's the size of the cage. I have to see this against my foot. Right. I am an EU size 39. That is how big it is next to my foot. Now let's do the fun bit and see how much stuff we can fit in here. And lucky us, because the cage actually comes with a wheel already installed, albeit probably too small for most animals, but it does have a wheel, so we don't have to worry about that. So, what can we put in here? Oh, I'm being so spoiled with space. Let's see, we can put a tube. Oh, 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 and we can also put a house. There we go, perfect place for the food dish. Oh, and we can also fit a very small, not yet fully grown, Dwarf hamster. Oh, look at all that space she has. Just look at all that space. Look. Look where she can go. All that all that running space, all that digging space. Yeah. Yeah, I'd hide my face too. I mean, this is basically the perfect cage right here. Look, look at all the space I'm saving with it. I, I literally cannot even fit a shoebox in this cage. I don't know what they were thinking either. And you know what? One more thing. This is my Syrian hamster's travel cage with my two dwarf hamster travel cages inside it. It is nearly twice the width and the same length. This is my travel cage for traveling. That's smaller and it's supposed to be for full-time living. I have actually lost my marbles at this point. My marbles are gone. They have, they have left me. They've gone to find a bigger cage. But at least it's stylish. What do you even say? Seriously, what, what? <laughs> how do people think that that's okay? How? I mean, if you go to their Instagram page, this is the thing that sends up red flags. If you go to their Instagram page, they have actually posted the guidance lines for habitats for hamsters, mice, and gerbils. Basically justifying, it, they've actually titled it, How Wall Rover Conforms to RSPCA's Guidance for Keeping Dwarf Hamsters, Mice, and Gerbils. If you have to justify that your cage must be good by posting these pages, 
there is something wrong. This is a really annoying issue that comes up with small animal cages, especially in the last couple of years where people are trying to get more and more, not trendy cages, but cages that fit in with their home a little more and look a little nicer, which I get, totally get that. You want your cage to blend in. This is why I do DIY cages, because I want them to look nice. The reason I don't use bin cages anymore, I don't personally like the look of them. And my cages are a little higgledy piggledy, but certainly if I was doing a design like this, that could look really nice if you had a couple of them along the wall in your home, that could work really well. But you see some of these trendy cages like uh, this wall rover cage, and also the cute cage or the cutie cage. I never know how that's pronounced. Q U is it Q U T E? I can't remember. This weird cage design that became popular a couple of years ago that is awful. And it's so worrying to see so many more cages that are focused on the design more than they are focused on giving the animal a decent quality of life. It is possible to design a cage that looks good without sacrificing space and without sacrificing basic needs of animals and yet companies are still selling these tiny trendy cages that look so lovely in your home for hundreds just hundreds and you're just throwing your money away on something that's basically useless look at this they've driven me to chopper this is how bad it is who am i trying to fool i drove myself to chopper but they paid the petrol Okay, so I've done some more editing for the vlog that's going up tonight. This one's definitely going to be up pretty late because I've got a lot of editing still to do and it still has to be rendered and compressed and uploaded. So I'm thinking it's going to be maybe 11, possibly later tonight that it goes up. By the time you watch this vlog, it'll have already been posted anyway, so that doesn't matter to you. The other thing I have managed to get done is cutting all the wood to make my little DIY train. I'm gonna read the measurements out to you guys as I measure them. So I've got two pieces here that measure 12.5 centimeters by six centimeters. Those two pieces there. Oh, sorry, make that three pieces. Two pieces that measure 12.5 by seven centimeters. One piece that measures 12 by 10 centimeters. And two pieces that measure 12.5 by nine centimeters. And these two pieces also have holes cut in them because these are going to be the windows on the side of the train. These are the pieces of wood that I cut out from those windows. You can see there fits in nicely there. And I'm actually gonna be using these as the uh, chimney. Chim is chimney the right word for a train? It might be the chimney on the front of the train. And I also need to cut out, I think, about eight more circular wooden pieces slightly bigger than this to be the wheels of the train. Unfortunately, my drill is out of charge, so I'm gonna have to wait until it's fully charged, which will probably be tomorrow morning sometime. Now that everything has been cut out, it's been sanded, it's smooth, it's safe, all I have to do is fix it all together. It's actually an incredibly simple DIY and significantly cheaper than buying that train. I think that train costs, I think it's about 14 euros, I can't remember. The price might have changed since I last bought one. Uh, but this, the single piece of wood that I had was about four euros 50 and I still have wood left over from it. So much cheaper. For the back half of my train, I have my two window pieces and the two pieces that measure 12.5 centimeters by seven centimeters. And one of these is going to be glued at the back between those two pieces like that. And the other one, as you can probably guess, is going to be glued in the same place, but at the front. However, this one needs a small doorway cut in here, and that will make sense when the whole design is finished. Jumping forward in time just for a moment so you can see what these look like now the glue has dried. You can see here I didn't line these up exactly with the side walls and that's just to give a, uh, a more textured look to the finished train. This big stack of circles I have here are to be the wheels. I've just cut them out and sanded them so they are all ready to be stuck on. And I've also cut the doorway out of this narrower piece and we can finally glue it into place right here.
Then we can glue the top bit on. Now, if you want to, you could attach a hinge to this. You can easily open it and see inside, but I have made this train bottomless, so I don't really feel that it's necessary. Time to say goodnight for this vlog. You guys know the drill. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.